I deleted just about everything off of my phone and it has been probably one of the best things that has ever happened to me. The phone for me, my smartphone, was by far the biggest distraction in my life. And I think for so many of us, it's all of these distractions that are taking away from us living a truly intentional life. exactly is the point of dumbing down a smartphone why not just get like one of those light phones like a talk and text only phone and not dumb down the smartphone so at first I considered that but there were a few reasons and a few conveniences why I chose to simply dumb down the smartphone as opposed to going with like a light phone or something like that because some of the benefits of those conveniences outweighed the distraction impact and so it was still worth it to me to keep the smartphone but to significantly dumb it down and you kind of have to know yourself and know your distraction level because before i dumbed down my phone i did try other methods to significantly reduce my screen time that i'll get to in just a second which none of worked for me but i want to first talk about the reason that i chose to do this in the first place so like i said the phone for me has always been the biggest distraction in my life and i had a sort of aha moment, a very specific moment where I realized that I was a lot more addicted to my phone than I thought I was. And it's actually a rather sad moment and it kind of breaks my heart a little. I was in the kitchen doing something. I had my phone on the counter in the kitchen and my five-year-old was in the kitchen with me and I must have gone upstairs. I think it was to bring some laundry upstairs and she had followed me upstairs and brought me my phone. Now, it didn't ring. I don't think I had any text messages or notifications go off or anything like that. She simply brought it to me and said, here you go, mommy, and left it beside me because she was so accustomed to seeing me with my phone. It was that very moment that I knew I had to make a change when it came to my relationship with my phone because now I'm thinking, okay, this is what my kids are seeing. They're starting to associate me with my phone. I'm not me without my phone and I was not okay with that. But after that happened, I knew I needed to make a change. I started looking at my screen time. I think I was averaging like three hours a day on average, which is insane. And I think statistically that's the average for most people, which is crazy to think about because in the course of a week, that's like about 21-ish hours, that's almost a full day on your phone in the course of a week, which is crazy. So like I mentioned before, I did try some other methods on my phone that I'm gonna share with you that I thought would help reduce my screen time, but they didn't. So the first thing I did, this was a long time ago, I turned off all notifications for everything on my phone except for text messages and phone calls. So anything else at the time that I had on my phone, whether it was social media or WhatsApp or like anything else other than text messages and phone calls, I turned off all notifications. That really didn't do anything for my screen time usage because just because I wasn't notified of something, I was still frequently checking all of my apps quite regularly. So the second thing I tried was removing my apps from my home screen and that didn't really work very well because while my home screen was now minimized, all I had to do was swipe over on my phone to open the app. And so it was only really one extra step to get to the app and that wasn't enough to cause me to use it less. I would still just swipe over and open the app. After that, I tried setting time limits. So you can go into your settings and set a time limit for certain apps. So if you only wanna spend, for example, like 15 minutes a day on Facebook, you can set a time limit. So I thought, this is great. I'll get the notification that I've been on this app for a certain amount of time and I won't use it for the rest of the day. Problem with this method was that at the bottom of the notification that you've reached your time limit, it has a little button that says ignore limit for the day. So all I would do was click that button, ignore the limit for the day. I had no self-control at all. So that didn't work for me either. Finally, the last thing I tried to do was deleting the apps themselves. So I got rid of like my Facebook app, my Instagram app, but then I just Googled, I'd open up my Chrome browser and I would Google Facebook or Instagram and check on it that way. So clearly I am somebody who has no self-control when it comes to using my phone. I would find workarounds and loopholes for all of these different methods that are supposed to limit my screen time. But for me, none of it worked. Maybe for you, some of these methods might help limit your screen time. For me, I knew I needed a more aggressive approach. So after none of that stuff worked that I tried, not only did I delete all of those apps, I just deleted everything, almost everything. I 
the biggest one for me was deleting my browser because deleting Google off of my phone made it impossible for me to either Google all of these apps like Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram. I could no longer Google them. I also can't Google 50 things during the day that just come across my mind. I don't think I need to Google everything that comes across my mind in a day. If something's really important and I'm really curious about something, I can always look it up on my computer later in the day. So for me, deleting Chrome off my phone was the biggest, had the biggest impact and still does. I did all of this about 30 days ago, so it's been about a month now. I do also still have my Spotify on here because I use my phone to connect to my Bluetooth speaker in my kitchen most of the day and listen to music that way. So that again has a convenience that I do like to use. It's not a distraction, it's just something that has been convenient in my life. So I do keep that on my phone as well. But for the majority of the last 30 days, my phone has been just a phone and it has been so refreshing. I told my husband it almost felt instantly like a weight was lifted when I did this. It felt I felt so much lighter and so much freer not to be tied to this phone the way that I had felt tied to it previously. And I think if you clicked on this video, if you're thinking about doing something similar, or if you're recognizing in yourself your addiction to your phone, I would highly encourage you to give this a try. Dumb it down as much as possible and keep only what you truly need on your phone. And you will not only feel lighter, but you'll notice how much time you have, how much more at peace you are with just going about your day without constantly checking your phone. Honestly, at this point for me, it has been nothing but beneficial. My screen time is significantly down to less than an hour a day, and that's mostly just texts and phone calls and FaceTime, not much more than that. So the first thing I did was get rid of any sort of background picture or anything like that on my phone so it's just a black screen when i look at it i just see my face which is kind of like a sad reminder that you're looking at your phone again maybe put it down when i open my phone so when i go into my phone i also don't have anything on my home screen i just have at the bottom my text messages my facetime because i do facetime my mom and my sister so they can see and talk to the kids sometimes i have my phone app and I keep my maps there as well because I do use my maps a lot when I'm driving. For me, having a smartphone is still beneficial for a convenience like having maps on my phone. That is something that I get a lot of value out of. And for me, it's not so much a distraction because when I'm using Google Maps, when I'm driving around or something like that, it's being used for a specific purpose for a specific time. And it's not something that I just mindlessly use on my phone. And then if you scroll over, there are still like some generic apps there. Like I do have my camera my calculator. I still have WhatsApp because I do have a few groups with family members that I'm able to stay in touch with that way. I currently have my weather app still on here, but I'm thinking of deleting that because I can check my weather on my computer first thing in the morning. And the weather is never that accurate anyway. I'll check it multiple times a day. It's constantly changing. It's never what it actually says it is. So that's an app I'm considering getting rid of. I'm currently in the process of going through all of my photos to transfer everything to my computer and not build up a collection of photos on my phone. I want to try and use my camera more to take photos and videos and less my phone. So right now I do still have my camera app and my photos app, but I'm trying not to use them regularly. I do currently still have my notes app and my reminders. Again, I'm thinking of deleting those as well because I got a little notebook that I'm going to use to take notes in rather than document everything in my phone. My goal with this is to treat my phone like a phone again. Primarily use it for texting and phone calls and FaceTime with family and things like that, but not use it to jot down every bit of information or to take all of my photos on or to use social media. Just browse the internet mindlessly constantly throughout the day. I think dumbing down our phones can be such a great way to eliminate a lot of the distraction in our lives and lead us to live a more intentional life. Because for me, that's what it's all about. I want my days to be spent with intention and not just mindlessness. And a lot of my phone time was just mindless. And I'm so happy that I did this. And I, like I said, I highly encourage you to do the same. If you're looking to live a more intentional life, this is a great place to start. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I will see you in my next video.